Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-released Carl Casper Cosmic Charger Dragster Kit in 125 scale. An MPC kit number 826, released in 2015 with all new graphics and new parts. Carl Casper himself was consulted to give more accurate rendering of the decals and paint schemes. In addition, there's a 10-piece front-mounted blower setup, uh, a motor cover, and enclosed front wheel fairings for this new rendition. It's amazingly accurate and does a good job of uh, commemorating the 220-mile-hour missile that Carl Casper put together. Uh, it's molded in white styrene with 15 new parts along with pad printed drag slicks and a full color decal sheet with all new improved graphics in full retro deluxe vintage packaging plus a bonus mini display box and other goodies it's almost like your albums from the 70s with all the stuff inside overall dimensions are length 12 inches width two and a half inches and two and a quarter inches high this is one of the mini boxes that are now coming in some of the round two kits. I'm sure they'll end up being collector's items. But also, with some of the kits, you get some expanded information and graphics to see about the real one-to-one -one item. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. The kit was molded in white vinyl, which is much easier to paint. And as I found out, you should use the front blower for this particular uh, color scheme. Um, and uh, But I used the uh, top blower version because I thought it looked great too. Construction starts with the wheels. And remember to remove the chrome from your glue points whenever you're putting those parts together. Uh, the items that you'll use here are the two chromed halves of the wheels and the rubber tires and you'll notice the outer rim halves have a wider chrome area and this was on the real dragsters to help trip the light beam that sets off the Christmas tree. So it can be seen on either side of the car uh, but once the rims uh, are dried um, then the tires just go right on with no glue. Next choose the blower intake system you want to use. I chose the top blower uh, but as I said the front blower is actually historically accurate. I just love the way the top blower looks, so I use that for my build. I removed the parts from the sprue for the top blower and cleaned them up. Uh, unfortunately, you'll find that this older uh, version of molds leaves uh, a little bit of bare plastic where you remove the part from the sprue. The best uh, thing to do is to touch it up with a little silver uh, sharpie. Before I completed the top half of the intake, I cut some sprue that was about the right diameter for the butterflies and painted them red and set them in at an angle and closed them up uh, to make it look more realistic. While the blower assembly dries you can start on the motor and pull out these parts, the block halves, the oil pan and the heads and the valve covers. Uh, one item that you'll notice is that on the uh, valve covers the word Imperial is there and that actually belongs to the earlier 392 Hemi. Um, so if you absolutely need this to be uh, period correct, you'd probably remove that and then uh, paint the uh, aluminum, uh, covers aluminum. But now you can uh, go ahead and assemble the parts uh, to this point and paint the block with some black paint. For some added realism, I decided to forego the kit supplied distributor and added my own magneto, which I used, uh, actually made from a distributor that was pre-wired uh, in a kit and I capped it off and made all the wires come out the side. So then I took some uh, two millimeter jewelry beading and uh, stretched the opening a little bit and put them on the wires and glued them into place in the uh, locations in the Hemi valve covers. As you can see 
the motor is nearly complete now, uh, but we still have to add the uh, the belt, the pulleys, and the fuel pump. Uh, but we can set this aside and let it dry and add some highlighting like the uh, red imperial letters and the boots that really set off the engine. There's some optional parts here uh, with the new wheel pants. Uh, the wheels are actually the tires are molded into them so you'd end up uh, assembling these two halves for each one and then we'll be painting those with the body. Looking over the body panels I noticed that there were some sink marks where some of the interior walls and tabs were. So I filled those with some spot putty, sand those off, and then uh, use, once again, some fine grit sandpaper to smooth her out. Spray the parts inside and out with a good quality primer, and make sure that it's compatible with your final color coats and clear coats. I also found some ejector pin marks on the inside of the sidewalls on the cockpits, and some of them would show, so I tried to fill those and make those as look uh, look as good as I could. I painted the side walls, um, the inner side wall silver uh, along with the panels there and also the rail framework and the other chassis parts I painted gloss black allowing those to dry now which doesn't take too long. The seat had some pretty good sized pin marks so I filled those because they'll be visible. The seat is part of the chassis assembly but we won't need it right away so gather these parts for uh, putting the chassis together and uh, note they're all painted um, like we talked about and the frame on the cockpit walls had to be painted by hand to match the rest of the frame so I used some gloss black there too. You'll need some patience to align and paint these parts. Uh, it's probably the hardest part of the build um, so uh, take your time uh, align the parts and see where they go together look for the locating pegs and pins on the parts and then uh, you may want to use some light clamps to keep some pieces together while you're uh, working the rest of them into place. I found it a little easier to deviate from the instruction uh, by gluing the two outer walls to the rail frame and allowing those to dry. And there's enough flex in the walls then when glued uh, to allow the transmission mount and rear end to be glued into place. The rear end axle shafts go through the holes in the cockpit walls. And once I had the transmission mount and rear end in place, I glued the rear cross member part there and then uh, into place and the inner side walls and set the drive shaft and rear end gear cover in place. And then I used some masking tape uh, to hold the whole assembly together uh, until it dried overnight. After the glue was good and cured, I, um, I finished up the cockpit area of the chassis, first by adding the seat, then the gear shift, the gas pedal, and the brake pedal. To their appropriate locations and use some tweezers to get those into place. So uh, once they're down inside the assembled cockpit there's really no room for your fingers. Next we can add the steering wheel and the steering shaft and the crossbar mount um, and let everything set and dry. Um, also at this time it's a good point to spray the, um, the body uh, with a white primer. If I haven't mentioned it before, test fit everything on this kit before you glue it together. I had noticed uh, after using the engine uh, and the chassis for a mock-up that um, uh, with, you know, with some tape to make sure they fit together that I had to make some modifications to the opening for the motor because the belt and pulleys would not fit there. Um, so I took off the top part and extended the front of the motor opening about an eighth of an inch uh, and the back area too just with a little curve uh, out uh, to make uh, a room for that motor to fit in there. Also through test fitting I realized I would need a little bit more room for the headers to uh, come out the body panel so I widened those out uh, at the places where the arrows indicate. I also noticed that there wasn't quite enough wheel clearance for the rear tires. With the brake calipers in place, they just wouldn't uh, go in far enough to clear those openings. So, uh, since the brake calipers aren't seen, so I removed those uh, brake calipers and test fit the wheels in place and they seem to fit just fine. Now I sprayed the body parts with a medium red that approximated the Carl Casper car. I decided to work on some smaller parts, so I got the chromed fuel tank out. It's in two pieces. So I removed the glue points um, chrome there 
and put the two halves together with some clothes pins to clamp them until they dry. Then I started to work on the fuel pump and the fuel line that's mounted on the front of the motor and runs down the center of the rail frame. Looking at some pictures of the fuel pump, I ended up painting the body of the pump uh, uh, flat black and the ends, the inlet, the outlet, and the line uh, um, Model Master aluminum. And once this dried, I used some clear red and blue for the various connectors. After everything was set up well, I decided to get back to the chassis build. So the fuel tank and the upper cross member are glued into place and then the fuel pump is added. And since I had previously uh, put the upper cross member in place to aid in construction, I had to angle the fuel line up through the rail frame until the pump was inside the frame. And then I slid it back to the motor location and inserted the line into the fuel tank location. Now I just snipped off about a sixteenth of an inch just to make it fit just right. With the chassis complete, it's time to glue it into place on the bottom half of the body. I taped the front of the rail to the lower body and held the motor end of the chassis in place. Then I used some uh, liquid cement and placed the needle where the frame bars meet the lower body and let the glue flow into the joint. Once I had it where it needed to be, I set the assembly on a flat surface, set some weight on the frame uh, of the, on the top of it in the white uh, box area there. Uh, to keep it and the glue in contact with the body. And I used uh, a weight there uh, of, of something like a, a bottle of glue to allow it to dry. Once the glue has set, I added the front axle and I used the uh, a hobby knife to remove the chrome from the locating pins and some from the center of the axle. Then I cleared off the paint and enlarged the U through the front of the chassis frame. It had been painted black where the axle pins set in and get glued on. So I also applied some glue to the trough on the lower body where the axle runs underneath. Now if you don't put some glue in there, the axle stands a good chance of getting broken off if you happen to bump it real hard. So with the chrome scraped off to glue the axle in, I just opted to paint it black again. And since the front axle was going to need some drying time, I went ahead and glued the rear slicks into place and to allow them time to dry and set them down on something flat so that they're even and look uh, parallel. So after all that had dried into place, I decided to put the front wheels on, which is a snap fit. Just hold the axle and push the wheels in by uh, steadily uh, pushing them on until they click into place. And there's a chrome cap that gets put over those, but I wanted to take some pictures with the panded wheels on also so I could decide which way I wanted to go with my display. Now that the tires are mounted, check the stance of your car to make sure that it, all four tires are hitting the ground and a gentle twist can usually correct that. So it's time to grab those steering rods and links and add the rest of the major body parts. The steering rod assembly consists of three parts. The first one connects to the steering wheel assembly and goes about halfway down the frame where it connects to the second section that runs down to the front of the frame, finally connecting to the steering linkage. The only thing I needed to do here was to open the hole a little bigger where the first rod connected to the steering wheel assembly and remove a little of the body locating pinhole near the gas tank for clearance of the rod and finally remove the chrome and glue the linkage together. Now after doing those things it went right into place. Now all of the parts uh, put in place from the motor to the front end now with the exception of the steering linkage and the front axle will not be seen when the body halves are glued together. Now we have to add the headers before putting the rest of the body parts into place. So they're just straight down dump pipes so remove some chrome where they be glued to the motor and then drop it through the exit area in the lower body and then push it back up a little bit from underneath and apply some glue there. Uh, once the glue is set for about 30 seconds push the header up and hold it into place against the block for about a minute to let it set up and then do the same to the other side. Now we'll fit the final three body parts into place. First add the upper nose part using some slow setting glue like tester's tube glue to give some adjustment time if you need it and a toothpick to apply small amounts to the part that's put into place. So test fit the upper body, the main part and note where it touches so that uh, at any part of the rear chassis you'll know where to use for a glue point. 
I then put the glue along the rest of the exposed lower front body area and also in the back and set the part in place. And at this time use some low tack masking tape or rubber band to uh, tape the parts together and set them aside to dry fully. Now get out the canopy in the frame and use some clear part cement or some white glue to glue those two pieces together. Use plenty of warm water and some decal solvent solution and add the decal to the canopy. When everything up to this point has dried well, add the last body part, the lower rear shell, and again test fit it and note where to place the glue points. On the lower part of the side walls there are two tabs sticking out that align with two slots in the lower body shell. So apply some glue there and on the alignment pins and sides and put the shell on and tape it in place and allow it to dry. This thing's got more curves than a crooked stick so when you're going to put the decals on make sure you have plenty of warm water and I strongly advise some decal setting solution be applied. So follow the instructions and they are a little vague uh, with a three-quarter view which is in black and white but take a look at these drawings and the color pamphlet and Note that the decals are numbered, so follow the numbered sequence as some decals overlap others. Once the decals were in place and fully thoroughly dried overnight, I used a clear coat to seal them into position. Now assemble the downforced wing for the front end. It consists of two posts and the airfoil, and with the posts in place on the airfoil, the C-shaped hooks are then uh, scraped of chrome on the glue points and then uh, glued to the front axle in place. Well there you have it. I finished off the wheel pants to show you both the version with the wheel pants and the one with just the wire wheels, more traditional dragster style. But either way you slice it, this is a great looking kit. Stunning actually. And with some patience you can turn this model out to be almost a, a contest winner, at least a showpiece. It is an older mold. We won't sugarcoat it. It's going to take some extra works. There's flash, there's pin marks, some things don't fit quite right. But once you get through it, look what you've got to put on your display. The details were awesome, but they were large with lots of curves. And without some solvent, I don't think that you would get them to contour to the body. And there's a lot of chrome and attachment points where you need to remove the chrome and be uh, cognizant of that so that you can get a good glue joint. There is also some sink marks and mold marks to deal with, but I would and I would not give this to a uh, inexperienced builder. Uh, this is more for the experienced builder, but if you really want an awesome-looking subject matter dragster, uh, the Carl Casper <laughs> car here is just one of the best in the business, and uh, with a presence like that. Uh, it's sure to turn heads on, on, your, uh, on your display shelf. So if you want to have an outstanding subject matter kit, go ahead and buy this kit. Don't be shy. Use our step-by-step -step guide here to fix any problems and you'll come out just fine. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook, and also at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.